Well, to be 2 Capital G here got a really impressive replay involving Magic Specters, and this really showcases the power and the consistency that the archetype still has, despite the fact that Magic Specter Corrin just got banned. And honestly, anyone who is in the know who really has played pure Magic Specters knows that losing Corrin was really not that big of a deal. It was actually a pretty difficult card to Pendulum Summon in its own archetype, and I just think that Magic Specters are still in a very good place. They remind me a lot of Sir Teller Knights. If you really look at them, on paper you think okay they can obviously go plus extremely easily they're a pendulum deck so they have that incredibly high ceiling of being able to summon you know five monsters at once they have a lot of great searchable traps so that means that you have those really strong turn one boards that can lock down your opponent make it so that they won't be able to use monster effects or really get their plays where they want to go and I feel like they're one of the only Pendulum decks that are not completely beholden to the Pendulum Summon because they have ties to the Brethren. So I feel like Magic Specters are low-key a very, very good deck. Like, it could be competitive right this second. And this is going to show you how to get the potential out of the deck by just making a few minor adjustments. Because, again, I don't really think that Magic Specter Karen, like, the loss of that card really wasn't a big deal. So this is a card... Duelist Advent, you guys recognize this from Maximum Crisis. It gets Luster Pendulum straight from your deck. This is pretty important because it can blow up your scales and then get you another copy of a scale. So you see he's going to Normal Summon, goes plus one, gets a copy of basically a Solemn Strike, the Magic Specter Tempest. Then he activates the Majesty's Pegasus, gets a Surge. He's going to Pendulum Summon for three. And then on top of that, he's going to activate Ties of the Brethren. And since he already used the Toad Effect, obviously he's not going to be able to use it again. But with Ties of the Brethren, he's going to be able to bring out Fox. He's going to be able to go... Uh, for crow and he's just gonna be able to plus even more and just when you look at this board like let's, let's just size this up at the end of the turn i mean this is pretty incredible i mean how many other decks in Yu-Gi-Oh can you just think off the top of your head can go plus seven in their first turn you guys know that you start with five cards in your opening hand let's just do a little quick math so we got two four six eight ten and then the pendulum scale here regeki in the hand that equals 12 cards like i don't understand how people could think that just specters are a bad deck right now when they could so easily go plus that is plus seven in your first turn and how many decks are really going to be able to compete against that when you essentially have double solemn strike and then you've got kind of like a, a little regeki break now i don't think that i would have used the um that's a uh, cyclone right I, I don't think i would have used the cyclone on the writing because or the excuse me the raijin because obviously he could just kind of use the book of moon effect but you see right here the subterra player is just in a really bad spot anytime he tries to use any monster effects he's hitting them with tempest and then on top of that he's able to just bring back all the pendulum monsters because pendulum have such a high ceiling now honestly if this was a different mirror force i'm not gonna lie this duel could have went a little different <laughs> he flips over the regular mirror force obviously that's not gonna get it done but if this happened to be I don't know, maybe a Drowning Mirror Force. Storming really wouldn't have done much because he still would have had access to the monsters. Even something like Quaking wouldn't have really done, like, I don't think it would have done anything because I believe you still would have been able to uh, to use the Majesty's Pegasus. But if that happened to be like a Drowning Mirror Force, it would have been different. But this video is really just to showcase that uh, the Magic Specter archetype still has that incredibly high ceiling. And it is a deck that I would not underrate, especially moving into national season. Like, don't be surprised if this is one of the decks that you end up running into and why i know that there are so many ways to answer the pendulum mechanic out there the unending nightmare and the uh, imperial order and obviously you have like anti-spell fragrance but as i've just showed this is not a deck that really has the it doesn't live and die just off of its pendulum summon it can obviously make good use out of the pendulum summon but even when it doesn't it still has a very good grind game thanks to majesty's pegasus thanks to cards like uh, ties of the brethren so just wanted to show you guys what this deck is capable of i mean a plus seven turn one that's something that i can't ignore so if you guys enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up let me know what you think in the comment section below and thank you guys for watching as always